let's look at the allowable values of the four quantum numbers. Allowable values. So these are the values that they can take on. And sometimes quantum numbers get a little bit confusing because, um, you know, we use the term numbers, but yet sometimes you'll, you'll see in a moment that we use letters to refer to the numbers. So it can be a little confusing. Um, and well, it can be quite confusing, actually. And, and I hope by structuring this as, as best I can in organized fashion, it's not too intimidating for you. So first off, the principal quantum number can take on integer values starting at 1. OK. <clears throat> n equals 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. The angular momentum quantum number then can take on values from 0 up to n minus 1. So for example, Example, if we had, uh, let me say we have n equals 2, well, with n, e n equals 2, we can have l equals 0 or l equals 1. And we'll do some more examples of this as, as we proceed. And then the magnetic quantum number can take on values from negative l, so negative l through to positive L. Okay, so that's all this means. Anywhere from positive to negative L. So an example, if we continue with this, n equals 2, L equals uh, 0 or 1. Um, well, if we had L equals uh, 1, we could proceed and have values for L equals 1, uh, or for M sub L equal to 1. Uh, <laughs> sorry, for, for values of L equals 1, that is the angular momentum quantum number equal to 1. M sub L, the magnetic quantum number, could take on values of negative 1, 0, and 1. And in fact, that in the previous example refers to those different spatial orientations about x, y, and z, as you often see. <clears throat> the, I'm going to come back in just a second and give you a little more, some more concrete examples. Uh, the spin quantum number is fairly straightforward, plus one half or minus one half. But I, I warned you that um, we're going to use some letters and, and, and things as, as well to refer synonymously to these um, numbers. So some uh, some disciplines, some spectroscopists prefer instead of n equals one, two, three, four, they use uh, capital letters, and so k refers to n equals 1, L, M, N. In fact, there's certain um, series of energy transitions, these spectral lines that correspond to uh, electrons dropping down into the K shell or the L. Things like K alpha, for example, if you've ever seen that, refers to a transition down to n equals 1. Um, uh, so then the angular momentum quantum number, which you remember I told you describes the shape. Right? It describes the shape. So it describes the shape. The shape that corresponds to L equals 0 is a sphere. And the letter that's often used is the letter S. And it actually refers to a historical reason from spectroscopy. There's a sharp, sharp line, but not that it, uh, not sphere. So don't, don't get confused there. Not that it starts with an S or sphere. Uh, L equals 1 uh, describes sort of a, a dumbbell shape, and that's what I had sketched uh, previously. Let's see if I can sketch that again for you. This, this is a rough shape, if you can imagine that in three dimensions. Okay, I'll shade that for you, of the P orbital. Okay, and that corresponds to L equals 1. And those three states of it here, the, the spatial orientations, then you could say, well, then this, this is p sub x, this is p sub y, and this is p sub z. Just these different values of m sub l. 
Um, sorry, I gave you S. And I forgot to give you P. And that was the, what I just showed you here. P is L equals one. It's P, and then D is L equals two, and so on. Um, <coughs> so F would be next, but we'll stick around with uh, S, P, and D uh, for this course. And let's say we've so we've described the principal quantum number could use either uppercase letters or uh, the numbers m uh, uh, so the angular momentum quantum number more most frequently these letters spdf are used uh, I, I always like to show you another way that you've potentially seen this previously a lot of people maybe have done some of this in high school or you've, you've seen it in a textbook or something you you've perhaps seen uh, a few things you've seen um, these electron box diagrams perhaps let's see s and a little box, uh, you might see P with a sort of a more of a rectangular box, um, D, and then even longer rectangular box. And these boxes are, are broken down. This one would have three boxes within it for P. Um, this one would have, that wasn't very clear, would have five. Okay. And then you. you so, so this is depicting the values of the angular momentum quantum number. Okay, so you know for L equals zero s, that shows you that there's one possible spatial orientation. That is, if L equals zero, well then spatial orientations possible range only from zero to negative zero to positive. So that is only one value. So if we have the s uh, subshell, you can only have spin up or spin down in it, and there's only one orientation, but then for L equals 1, we've got P and three possible spatial orientations of it, negative 1, 0, and 1, or P sub X, P sub Y, P sub Z, um, negative 1, 0, or 1. Now, be a little careful, depending on your discipline, um, as to where you assign whether you assign px, py, and pz to negative one, zero, and one, as I've done, um, I believe in organic chemistry there may there's usually the convention to assign a bond along the z-axis, and um, I, I could be wrong, but I believe that that often is attributed to a value of zero for um, m sub l. But uh, for for our purposes, it doesn't really matter what the mapping is. It's really just a um, I kind of acute memory aid anyway with these spatial orientations, um, but uh, there, hopefully you, you can see how this is starting to piece together. And then the spin values we'd have um, spin up, spin down could go into each. So there's three possible states we say within P and D has five. And again, you can have an electron spin up and spin down into each of them. Okay, so those are the um, allowable values for the quantum numbers and the final thing that I will show you is again one more thing that you might have seen uh, dealing with quantum numbers and it's just okay what's the relative um, energy level for all of these possible um, combinations of, of quantum numbers and there's a little memory aid that you, you, you may have seen where you take you write 1s and then below that you write 2s and then 2p and then 3s and 3p and then 3d so we're going up to increasing values of, of um, the angular momentum quantum number and in fact you can see the same this this little uh, pyramid or half pyramid is, is describing again these same allowable values that I just mentioned to you up there. So then we get to n equals four, where we have four s, four p, four d, four f. And then the neat thing though with this is after you've done that, the, the next trick is you draw this little diagonal arrow through and it shows you, okay, you go through one s, that means one s has the lowest energy, then two s, then two p and three s. So no surprise, I mean, you're going in increasing order of principal quantum number as you would really just imagine from the Bohr model, right? The Bohr model, you've got these different shells. It makes sense that uh, the lowest energy would be the one closest to the nucleus and so on. Um, 
but then an interesting thing happens here after you go through three um, three p. You, you notice that four s has the arrow go through it before uh, three d. And what that tells us is in fact that four s is a slightly lower energy upon filling to make a neutral atom than three d is. So this is uh, again another way that uh, we can often refer to the energy levels, and it's using these same quantum numbers that we saw. Um, up here and those same allowable values. So I, I, I really hope that this is starting to come together and is not too intimidating. But do uh, you know, give it some time. It does take some time to digest.